Hello my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that I've been given the pleasure to welcome you onto my channel, I'm Vanessa Semina and welcome to the fam. So you guys, today's reading is all about the next steps in your life and in order for you to figure out exactly what is going to be going on next in your life, what your upcoming steps are, I have prepared four groups for you to choose from and I would like you to pick one of these four groups intuitively. So just go with whatever your gut feeling tells you to choose, go which whatever group resonates the most with you. So regarding the four groups, we have the Tektite, we have the Shiva Lingam, we have the Garnet, as well as the Emerald. As usual, my beautiful little unicorns, you will have the timestamps down below in the description box as well as in the comment section. So if you feel like you need a minute to meditate on the four groups in order to make the right choice for you, then pause the video right here, right now, in order to just take you know a moment of time to truly meditate on the choices that you have before you and you guys before i get into the video i just wanted to thank you all for all of the love that you bring to my channel for all the amazing vibes and energy and i also wanted to give a special thanks to my patrons who are making it possible for me to continuously be able to put out content but yeah, you guys, I don't want to waste too much time in the intro. I would rather spend more time within our readings. So I'm going to be getting straight into the readings with the first group, which corresponds to the Tektite. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Tektite. So group number one, first and foremost, I would like to speak to you about why you may have chosen this stone, aside from the fact that you may have just loved its physical appearance. So the Tektite is a stone that helps accelerate healing from any sort of ailments or injuries that you may have, sore muscles. And the stone also helps you discern between what is true and what is false. So the upcoming steps in your life may have to do with the fact that you will have to know exactly what is right and what is wrong, what is the truth, and what is just a false statement. But group number one, let's move further into your reading to figure out exactly what the next steps are in your life and how you can best handle them in correlation to the tech tech. Okay, so group number one, first and foremost in your reading, we have the five of wands, we have the three of pentacles, we have the seven of wands, as well as the ace of wands. So we have a lot of wands here. We have a lot of very passionate energy. We have energy that is creative, you know, where there's movement happening. And one thing that I see in correlation to the text height that has to do with the next steps in your life is the fact that you're going to have to decide between what is right for you and what is right for everybody else because those can be two different things. You know, what is right for you to be doing in life does not always reflect on, you know, what other people think that you should be doing. And in the Three of Pentacles, one thing that I see is that you may speak to people or you may have already spoken to people about the path that you want to go down when it comes to, you know, your work, when it comes to your studies, and people may not always agree with that. And that is one thing that I see in the Seven of Wands, the fact that you have to decide whether you go with what your heart wants or whether you go with what your brain wants and other people want. So there's kind of like a struggle here and that is one thing that I see in the five of wands and in correlation to the next steps of your life, there is a solution here, okay? The ace of wands shows that there is a new beginning when it comes to this matter, this thing that is sort of like pulling you in different directions. Do you go after your dreams or do you go after the plan that you had already set out or the plan that is more socially acceptable, so to say? But as I said, there is a solution here. So let's move further into your reading to figure out exactly how you can conquer these next steps and how you can make sure that um, you're able to choose your heart over what you think you should choose. Because at the end of the day, going with what your heart desires will have the better outcome for you because any sort of friction, any sort of you fighting against your true desires will just result in you know the situation that we have here in the five of wands where it's just a struggle, where things are not moving forward. So definitely consult in people who you know may have some good wisdom, but be, careful with who you confide in. Be careful with who you speak to about this. We have the desert, we have the mountain, we have the wolf, we have the lake, the new moon, as well as the winter solstice. 
Group number one. One thing that I see here in the desert is that just basically, you know, stillness, that is what I see in the lake as well as the desert, is a situation where all of a sudden you will have an idea, where all of a sudden things will pop into your head where you're like, wow, okay, I know how to take these next steps in my life and I know how I can sort of realign things in a way that works for me as well as the people and the situation around me. So there doesn't have to be sort of this picking between what you want and between what would, for instance, make your family or your partner happy. There can be harmony when it comes to that. But in the desert, one thing that I see is that you have to take time to sort of discover where this intersection is, where there's harmony. You need to take time to sort of just see further ahead, if you know what I mean. So think of the desert as a place where not very many animals or plants thrive. It's, it's a very still place without a lot of distraction, so to say, where you can truly focus. So as one of the next steps in your life, one thing that I see is that you have to take time to be basically in your personal desert, in your personal Sahara, and you need to take time to really declutter everything else and just focus on the matter. So in the lake, obviously it's very clear that stillness is something that is required, that stillness is part of the next steps in your life, as well as just reflecting on what has been and what could be. So as I mentioned, um, the next steps in your life has very much to do with breaking free of any confinement that you're feeling, of any restrictions that you're feeling mentally as well as physically that may have to do with a group of people or just basically other people's opinions, maybe society as a whole, and just sort of reflecting on how important this truly is or what kind of difference it may make to your life is something that will lead you to conclusions, is something that will lead you to either think to yourself, okay, I need to sort of work a little more with what my family or friends expect or you're gonna be like okay like actually it doesn't make that big of a difference whether people approve or not actually i'm going to just stand my ground however that may affect others and in the mountain one thing that i see is that part of your next steps in life require a lot of strength so strength is something that we all have but we don't always make use of it and one thing that I see in the wolf is that it's instinctually going to kick in. So part of your next steps is not only finally doing what you've always wanted to do, it is also the fact that all of a sudden you will unlock a new side of your strength that you may have not known existed in the past. So we all have different types of strength. There can be emotional strength, there can be physical strength, there can be strength in dealing with difficulties, with loss, you know, there are so many different types of things that we as human beings need to be strong for and it can be so hard, but at the same time, it's important for you to discover these different aspects and for you to know that they exist. So in the new moon, however, one thing that I see for you, group number one, and the next steps in your life is that you're going to be making a promise. So you're either going to be making a promise to yourself that, you know, I will succeed and I'm going down this route that is not easy, but I'm going down it because I know that there is something greater at the end of the tunnel. But there may also be a promise here that you're going to make to somebody close to you, to somebody who is maybe doubtful of your idea that you've confided in and finds like, okay, if you want to do this, you need to promise me X, Y, and Z. Either way, there are some sort of ties being morphed within these next steps of your life. It could be the signing of a contract. Either way, um, this promise is something that will affect you for longer than just the next steps. This promise is something that you will refer back to probably within a few months or even years that will sort of keep you driven and motivated to continue fighting for your cause and to continue going after what it is that your heart wants instead of what it is that you're supposed to do. So group number one, that is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you found it insightful and I will see you in my next reading. 
Hello group number two and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Shiva Lingam group number two. So I want to first and foremost speak to you about why you may have chosen the Shiva Lingam and also what sort of effect this may have on the next steps in your life. So the Shiva Lingam is a stone that brings safety as well as security to your life and other family members. So that may be something that you need or an effect that you can greatly benefit from. But another thing that the Shiva Lingam is known to do is to accelerate professional as well as financial growth. So maybe you're trying to get to that next step professionally or in your education, or you're trying to accelerate your financial growth. So the fact that you chose the Shiva Lingam may be an indicator that this reading is right for you. But let's move further into your reading group number two to figure out exactly what the next steps are in your life. Okay, so group number two in your reading, we have the Seven of Pentacles, we have the Seven of Cups, we have the Page of Cups, as well as the Seven of Swords. So a lot of the number seven is going on. I see a lot of sort of movement and a lot of action within these next steps. So one thing that I find imperative for you, group number two, is to keep in mind in the Page of Cups that you will be going through situations that are new emotionally, that are situations that you may have never experienced before. So try and keep your cool and try and not freak out about them because no matter what happens, you don't always have control over other people or exterior circumstances, but you have control over how you react to situations. So that is just a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of a tip that I see here that would benefit you within these next steps of your life. So moving into more details about the next steps coming up, in the Seven of Pentacles, one thing that I see is you being able to finally see the fruit of your labor, to finally see things growing financially in the earthly realms, but also in a way of physical growth. So if you've been, for instance, training a lot or you've been trying to gain or lose weight, I definitely see you finally being able to see results. So no matter how little or how big those results may be, don't get in over your head. So you know how sometimes you have a little results and you're like wow this could really be something huge and you get in over your head or sometimes you have really big results and you start to jump into bigger sort of projects and you try to take on all of a sudden a lot more like multiple times the amount than you did the first time that you were successful which then leads to things not going the way they should because you've just now bitten off more than you could chew so that is something that i want you to avoid that is something that i feel like would be better for you to just basically let things grow slowly and celebrate each and every step but don't move too quickly because i feel like things that are working out for you, things that are starting to manifest into reality that you've started to create, um, they're still a little fragile. They still need a little bit of time to properly settle and to properly get to that point where if you make like a bigger mistake or you make a hasty decision, things won't fall apart. So as tempting as it could be, that is one thing that I see in the Seven of Cups, as tempting as it could be emotionally to try and just already take things to the next step with whatever it is that is working, don't do it, group number two. Make sure that you allow time for things to settle, that you allow time for things to tr reveal their true colors. And that is one thing that I want to talk to you about in the Seven of Swords. So in the Seven of Swords, I see a situation where you know there may be winners and there may be losers either way there's somebody walking away knowing that they did wrong even though they shouldn't have so whether that person is you or somebody else i just want you to be cautious of this situation it doesn't need to be a situation where there's been malicious intent but Either way, you know, there is going to be a loser where there is a winner when it comes to this situation. So be very aware of this group number two. Be very aware of how you communicate. Are you making sure that all the details are being said? And also, are you getting all the details from other people? Or do you feel a little slighted? Or do you feel like details are being left out in order to sort of entrance you to do something that somebody else could benefit from? So just a little pointer for you. However, I don't want you to feel too sort of worried about this. 
Let's move further into your reading. We have childhood, we have the summer solstice, we have music, lightning, the green man, as well as the ocean. So let's move straight into your reading. One thing that I see here in the summer solstice is that part of the next steps in your life have to do with radiance, have to do with you allowing yourself to be radiant. So group number two, I feel like there can be an elevation in your self-worth as well as your self-esteem and how you can sort of achieve this is through being aware of the power that lies within you. Because oftentimes we feel like we're just one in a million or one in a billion, which to a certain extent, let's be real, is true. But at the same time, there have been single people who have made significant changes in this world. But know that oftentimes those changes work when you collaborate with other people. That is how they are even able to happen. So. In the green man, I want you to think of synergy. I want you to think of how much power there is in numbers and in working with people who have good intentions, who know what they're doing and who can help you on your path and on your journey. So think to yourself in synergy. That is basically when a lot of different people, animals, uh, combine basically their powers and it has a way bigger impact than all of them having you know, their powers by themselves and just adding those together. So do you know what I mean, group number two? So know that when you add the powers up, when you work together, when you collaborate, when you actually work with others and their powers, that is when you can create something really big. So if you're the kind of person who likes to do projects by themselves, and I can totally feel you, and the reason why can be because of control. For instance, I am the type of person who likes control and projects. You may be the kind of person who feels like when you've worked with other people in the past, like you put in your all, but they don't really do so. So I totally get that and I totally understand, but at the same time, you need to keep in mind that you can't be everywhere and you can't do everything. So if you're in the process of building your own empire, if you're in the process of just creating anything that you know is physically impossible for you to be at every little corner and doing everything better than say an expert in that field, try to give people tasks, try to delegate things to other people and know that your time is what is money. And if you're spending time trying to do things that you know others can probably do better, experts could probably do better, then try and work with an expert. So as a example, for instance, putting up a website if you want to start an online store, if you know that that isn't your strength and it'll take such a long time for you to even learn and acquire the skill of you know drawing up a website of putting up a website then let somebody who knows what they're doing handle it and bank that time know that that time you can use for instance to source your product or to be able to do pr whatever it is that you're better at or that you know for sure nobody else can do but any task that you can sort of delegate to somebody else try and do so try and make that how you work because you'll get so much more done and as I said in synergy, this collaborative effort and energy in the end can create something so much greater than if you just had your soul power involved. So in childhood, I want you to have a little bit of an innocent outlook. So within the next steps of your life, I feel like maybe life has hardened you and now these next steps need to be steps where you don't allow things that have happened to you too hard on you to turn into like this adult that doesn't laugh or smile as much and doesn't have as much fun as they know that they could so keep that in mind that as we grow older as we progress as we go through more life experiences as we have here in ebb and flow you know there are ups and downs there's constantly sort of cycles happening we can often become unaware of the fact that all of a sudden we are hardened, we are tense. We're now in a kind of space where we're not as free-spirited as we used to be or maybe could be. But one thing that I see within these next steps in your life that can allow you to gain harmony as well as just 
be in a place where you feel confident and protected is music. So music may be something that has already been a part of your life that you already love, but if you've sort of not been making music or doing as much with music as you did in the past, think to yourself if you can actually notice it missing in your heart because I always feel like when I'm not connected to music, like something is missing and it really bugs me and it gets under my skin. And you may feel the same way. You may totally get me when it comes to that. But you may also be the kind of person who has not yet discovered the power that lies in music. So if that is in fact you, then try and explore music. Try and explore music in meditation, music while working out or being physically active and just what an effect music can have on your mood as well as your capabilities physically. And Music can also be a mantra that you do each time, for instance, before you have a lot of work to do or you have an exam, you listen to the same song each and every time in order to prep yourself and put yourself in that mindset of success and getting a lot of things done. So that will truly help you within your next steps in life. That is something that will sort of catapult you to a space where you feel like you're ready to take on more things, as well as just let these ventures that already exist truly grow and carry as many fruit as possible. So group number two, that is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you found it insightful, maybe a little motivational, and I hope that you got one or two ideas on how you can best move forward in life within these next steps that are coming up for you. And I'll see you in my next video. Hello group number three and welcome to your reading. So you chose the garnet, so group number three. First and foremost, a few words about why you may have chosen the stone aside from the fact that it's gorgeous. So the garnet is known to detox your system as well as help you regenerate and revitalize. So if you feel like you've been a little slumpish, that may be why you've chosen this stone. But another thing that the garnet is set to help with. But let's move further into your reading to figure out exactly what is happening within the next steps of your life. Okay, so group number three in your reading, we have ceremony, we have dream time, we have the whale, wind, the clouds, the spring equinox, the king of pentacles, the tower, the hierophant, as well as the devil. So group number three, I'm gonna get straight into your reading about your upcoming steps in life. So one thing that I see is that there is a situation here that may be tempting, okay? So I wanna speak to you about the devil as well as the tower because that is a situation that can make a lot of people uncomfortable or make a lot of people feel like, oh my God, like I'm scared about this. So group number three, I don't want you to be scared. I want to inspire you to be strong. I want to inspire you to, you know, activate a side of you that can overcome any obstacles because obstacles are an inevitable part of life. They're just human nature, you know, to have to go through obstacles and difficulties. And one of the next steps in your life definitely entails a situation where you are tempted, you know, that is what the devil is about. And that temptation may lead to a situation here that has to do with the tower. So the tower is a situation when left, you know, uncontrolled that can create a lot of destruction and create a lot of friction. So basically this tower burning down, it was never built on a solid foundation and it's just a situation where little things all of a sudden begin to escalate. And that is usually what the devil is all about. You know, the devil is a situation where you're tempted into going a little out of your comfort zone, into going a little into a direction that you're not sure about or that you know isn't beneficial for you and then before you know it all of a sudden you're addicted to shopping you know so obviously that's just a little more innocent example there are a lot more examples like for instance with abusing substances etc so that is something that can be really serious and that i want you to watch out for so if there are people around you who you feel like don't have control over themselves, especially with those types of substances or situations, and they're trying to encourage you to do the same. See this as a warning sign and keep in mind that you don't want the tower to be a situation that occurs within your life. So moving further into your reading within the Hierophant, I see that how you can protect yourself and how you can make sure that you don't sort of get lured into any of those types of situations is to focus on your spiritual growth as well as your spiritual knowledge. So 
The Hierophant shows me that spirituality is something where you can get a lot of strength from. So I don't want you to worry too much about any tempting situations because whenever you know who you are and your head is where it's supposed to be, you know, you've got your feet on the ground, it is much easier for you to focus on what you have here in the King of Pentacles. Because in the King of Pentacles, I see that the next steps in your life, you know, you can either allow temptation to get the better of you or you can focus on your bags you can focus on your health your wealth all the things that you can build on and that is exactly where i want spirituality to lead you to group number three so if you're somebody who is a little unsure of spirituality or you kind of do this secretly you know you kind of watch pick a card reading secretly because you know that your family, your friends, your religion may not approve of this. See this as an opportunity for you to use spirituality to focus on your things in the earthly realms, to create things that you know in your heart you were able to do through spirituality just to confirm for yourself that yes, I'm doing the right thing through meditating, through being aware, mindful here in the moment, through being spiritually on an alignment with my body where I'm in total harmony. That is how I'm able to focus on what is important and focus on building wealth and retaining wealth. And wealth, as I said, is financially, it has to do with your health. Wealth is something that is different to each and every one of us. But what is essential for you is to know that within these next steps in your life, some sort of ceremony would be helpful for you. So with a ceremony, I mean, for instance, lighting candles within your house and just meditating on what it is that you want. A ceremony may also be, for instance, holding a little ceremony with a crystal each and every morning, holding the crystal in your hand, maybe just holding your hands over the crystal, feeling its energy and its vibration and trying to sort of soak that up if you feel good vibrations from that crystal. So think of all of these different ways how you can soak up good energies and how you can shape shift and that is one thing that I see in the cloud. I want you to know that you're somebody who can morph into so many different things and so many different ways and whether you allow any sort of temptation or situation that is not going to end up good for you, whether you allow that to actually protrude into your life is up to you because you shape your life. You're sort of, see yourself like the clouds. You know, clouds constantly, they just sort of let the wind shape them. So they let things that are happening shape them, but they decide basically how they react to it, if you know what I mean. So the clouds do go with the flow, but at the same time, they're the ones who are shape-shifting. They're the ones who are able to shape shift. So see yourself as capable of doing that and that allows you to go with the flow instead of just being this one stagnant cloud. Imagine a cloud that couldn't shape shift, that is just always the same shape. I mean, that's going to be a life full of friction. So take that sort of analogy with you. Then in the spring equinox, I see that within the next steps of your life, there's some sort of rebirth. And with the whale, I feel like it has to do with a breach where you're sort of getting out of the zone that you're comfortable or getting out of a zone that is now, you know, bygone, that is now old. So. There could be an ending of a cycle, there could be something where um, you're leaving the past behind, but in dream time, I definitely feel like this breach, this sort of getting over what is normal right now to you and creating a new normal has to do with creativity and has to do with you discovering actually what creativity can do for you and how creative you truly are. So activate that side of yourself. Don't allow anybody to sort of tell you otherwise. Don't allow anybody to tell you to be less creative or less imaginative because at the end of the day, if you really want to break through any sort of resistance or break through different barriers when it comes to your personal growth, your health, your finances, what you need to do is be creative, is think outside of what you're doing right now. Because if you just continue to do what you're doing right now, then you'd be in the same spot forever, which you don't want. You want to continue growing. So see the wind as activation. See the wind as basically a sign that within these next steps in your life, activation is necessary and you need to make sure that you're the one who is moving. You're the one who is going also with the wind. That is something that we spoke about in the cloud. Make 
make sure that you're going with the flow and shifting your shape according to what the path of least resistance is, according to what is easiest for you to sort of get along with. So that could be with people, that could be with your job. Just make sure that you're not resisting. Make sure that you're just going with whatever the flow says that you should go with. Go with whatever feels comfortable with you. And that is how I see these next steps in your life unfolding for the better instead of allowing any sort of tempting offers that you know are too good to be true disrupt all the amazingness that you have waiting for you so group number three that is a reading that i received for you i hope that you enjoyed it and i hope that you found it insightful and i will see you in my next reading hello group number four and welcome to your reading so you chose the emerald so group number four i want to first and foremost speak to you about why you may have chosen this mineral so group number four the emerald is a stone that is said to help improve your memory as well as your brain function and it is associated with the planet mercury another thing that this stone is said to do is to help sort of marriages is to help form unities and to just form that bond of a family so maybe that is something that you need a little bit of help with maybe being able to improve your memory would be something that would be of great benefit or help to you right now either way let's move into your reading about what your next steps are in life in correlation to the emerald okay so group number four within your reading we have rain we have the meadow we have the river the island tsunami the autumnal equinox then we have the ace of pentacles we have the four of cups we have the four of pentacles as well as the page of pentacles so we've got a lot of pentacles going on here as well as one card concerning the cup so there's definitely something going on here in the earthly realms within your next steps in life that is definitely something that is going to be of great importance as well as how you feel about it emotionally so i definitely see that you know there is a situation here where you may be clinging on a little tightly to something in the earthly realm so maybe you for instance always pay your bills last minute or you know that there's some outstanding bill some outstanding thing that you need to sort of like pay and get away from your to-do list maybe there's also something that has to do with your health and getting healthy you've sort of just been like procrastinating about and it's essential for you to know that there are new beginnings here waiting for you but you have to let go of those feelings because in the four of cups one thing that i see is that that is something that is blocking this new beginning in the earthly realms this ace of pentacles being able to start this new cycle you know you're sort of just at the end of an old cycle that has to do with the earthly realms and you're not taking that step onto the next cycle because you're so afraid of what will happen if you do so you're so afraid of getting out of this comfortable bubble that is like not as comfortable as it could be but comfortable enough for you to not want to move to anywhere where there could even be the slightest bit of discomfort or the slightest bit of um sort of a risk so that is one thing that i feel in the four of cups and you have to let go okay you have to put those feelings aside and know that in the page of pentacles there's something new coming where there is financial abundance that is possible where there is improvements in health wellness your well-being that are all here and up for grabs for you basically but if you never allow yourself to have that sort of beginner mindset to have that sort of time where you're just learning about something new so this could be for instance a new job it could be for instance a new diet or a new way of living so obviously at the beginning it's always going to be difficult the page is sort of usually a person who is a little insecure about what it is that they're doing because they're not yet very experienced but in the ace of pentacles you know there is a new cycle beginning so this is not just something that is passing by this is not just an insignificant opportunity that you would be missing out on if you let fear get the best of you this is something where there's a new cycle starting something where there are new opportunities and i feel like what it's going to need one of the things within your next steps in the tsunami is a wake-up call so something is going to shake you something is going to bring you to a situation where you're moved and that is something that i see in the river you know movement is not only what you have to do but sometimes movement is something you get pushed to do so know that the tsunami in correlation with the river these are you know very strong masses of water that can 
do a lot of destruction, but they can also just move a large and heavy amount of things, items. And I don't want you to be sort of hit where you don't expect it. I definitely want you to allow yourself to start a new cycle of the earthly realms, to not let your emotions get the best of you. But if you don't do this, if you don't sort of allow yourself to move on to where you need to move on to, then I see that the wake up call may be a rude awakening. It may be a situation where the tsunami is a lot bigger than it had to be. That is obviously going to shake you where you're vulnerable. And that is one thing that I see in the meadow. So the more you sort of restrict yourself from chasing your dreams, from going after the next steps that you know that you need to take. And group number four, that is one thing that I see in your reading. You don't need guidance about the next steps in your life. You know what the next steps in your life are. You know exactly what you need to do to move to that next step, but you're not doing it out of fear, out of not wanting to be uncomfortable, out of not wanting to put yourself out there and be vulnerable but it's funny because when you do that you actually make yourself even more vulnerable because you're keeping yourself confined in a space that you don't belong in anymore that you've outgrown and that you need to move on from so allow sort of purification to happen of those thoughts allow yourself to sort of slowly but surely filter this sort of behavior out of your system and that is one thing that i want to talk to you about in the rain the rain purifies and it takes time though you know it's not instant purification rain washes certain things away and allows new things to grow you know rain is needed in order for new plants to thrive in order for new things to be able to come to life and at the same time rain also purifies and that is what i want you to see within your next steps yes you need rain in order for new things to be able to grow but at the same time, rain also washes old things away. So when new things grow, old things go. Okay, so that is your motto for the upcoming steps in your life. Allow yourself to release. In the autumnal equinox, I see that you have to, like a tree, release the old leaves in autumn that you don't need, that are taking up energy that could be used otherwise. And the next steps in your life have everything to do with the island where you create this sort of area of solitude for you to work on your ventures, work on yourself and not spend so much time sort of socializing or going out. Spend a lot of time working on this new project that is on the horizon, working on this new thing. It could be studying, it could be your work, it could also be your health spend time where nobody basically has an input on how you feel about the situation because one thing that i see is that being in a vulnerable state within these next steps in your life is going to make you an easy target and is going to make your feelings an easy target so that doesn't mean that people are going to be out to get you but you might easily feel like they are you might easily feel hurt is what i'm trying to say so try and protect yourself by just staying in solitude for the first little bit until you figure it out how you can get over this hurdle to get to the next stage in your life and how you can sort of avoid this wake up call being too much of a rude awakening so push yourself forward group number four don't allow yourself to be stagnant right now i see that there are amazing opportunities that are just around the corner but you need to actually go around that corner you need to stop letting these feelings of say you know self-pity these feelings of fear of telling yourself oh you know like i'll do it on my time the time has come now you have to take action then you have to move you know movement is something that is essential for you within the next steps in your life okay so group number four that is the reading that i received for you i hope that you found it insightful and i hope that you found it inspirational as well as motivational and i will see you in my next reading Thank you.